This is a revision video for the AQA GCSE Chemistry Unit 4 topic, Chemical Changes. This comes up in Paper 1 of both GCSE Chemistry and Combined Science. In this video, we're going to look at the reaction of metals with water. In the description below, there's a link to the accompanying worksheet. By the end of this video, you should understand how reactions can be used to put metals in order of reactivity. You should be able to recall a general word equation for the reaction of metals with water, complete word equations for the reactions of specific metals with water, and also complete symbol equations for the reactions of group one metals with water, which is really a topic from unit one when you studied the alkali metals, but we're going to refresh it here. We've mentioned before that it's possible to use our observations of one reaction to predict whether another chemical reaction will happen. And it's possible to do this because the metals can be placed in a consistent order of reactivity called the reactivity series. In our last video, we looked at how the reactions of metals with oxygen could be used to make a reactivity series. The alkali metals reacted spontaneously, so they come up at the top of our series. Metals like magnesium only reacted quickly when they were heated. And metals like gold, which comes at the bottom of the reactivity series, barely reacted at all. We can then use that reactivity series, in which the metals are in order of their reactivity, to make predictions about how they'll react with water. Metals reacting with water is an example of a displacement reaction. In a displacement reaction, a more reactive element takes the place of a less reactive element in a compound. When metals react with water, if they're more reactive than hydrogen, they can take the place of the hydrogen in the water. This means that straight away we can say that any metal less reactive than hydrogen won't be able to react with water because it won't be able to displace the hydrogen. When a metal reacts with water, Definitely it makes hydrogen. two products. The first one is a metal hydroxide, which is the proper name for an alkali, and the second one is hydrogen gas, which you may see produced as bubbles. You can test for the presence of the metal hydroxide using universal indicator, which is green in neutral solutions, like the water you started with, but blue in alkaline solutions, like the metal hydroxide that you make. You can test for hydrogen by using what's often called the squeaky pop test. If you ignite hydrogen, it will burn rapidly and make a squeaky pop sound. Again, we can split our metals into three groups. Potassium, sodium and lithium from group one react very rapidly with water. You'll see lots of bubbles being produced. Then we have our medium reactivity metals, things like magnesium and iron. If you put these in water, you won't see an obvious reaction. You probably won't even see any bubbles. But if you add some universal indicator to that water, over a series of quite a long time, it will gradually turn blue, showing you that this metal hydroxide is being produced. Finally, we have our jewellery metals, those very unreactive metals. And because these are less reactive than hydrogen, they can't displace the hydrogen from the water, and so no reaction will happen at all. If you've downloaded the worksheet from the description, you should now be able to fill in all of section one. You need to be able to write word and symbol equations for all of the chemical reactions named in the specification. So let's look now at how we would do these word equations. Like when metal reacted with oxygen, we have a general equation for metals reacting with water. Metal plus water reacts to form metal hydroxide plus hydrogen. Remember, you always need to have an arrow in the centre of your word equation, never an equals sign. So, iron reacts with water to make iron hydroxide plus hydrogen. Pause the video and complete the other five word equations. Hopefully, you've managed to work out that titanium plus water reacts to make titanium hydroxide plus hydrogen, calcium reacts with water to make calcium hydroxide plus hydrogen, chromium reacts with water to make chromium hydroxide plus hydrogen, lead reacts with water to make lead hydroxide plus hydrogen, and sodium reacts with water to make sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen. It always follows the exact same pattern. For the alkali metal topic in Unit 1, you need to be able to write symbol equations for the reactions of the group 1 metals with water. So let's look at this now. The start of the symbol equation is straightforward. I've got my alkali metal, lithium in the example, and water. Each water molecule is going to split apart to make one hydrogen and one hydroxide. I know that elements from group 1 form compounds with hydroxides that have a 1 to 1 ratio. So one lithium and one hydroxide. Now, 
I'm left with one hydrogen, but actually hydrogen doesn't go around as single atoms. It goes around as diatomic or divalent molecules, which each contain two atoms, just like oxygen does. So this must be H2. So right now, my equation doesn't balance. I've got one hydroxide coming from one water molecule, but I've got two hydrogens coming from two water molecules. So what I need is two water molecules and two lithium hydroxides. And that means that I'm also going to need two lithiums. Now, the good news is that once you know that pattern, it's going to be the same for all of the rest of group one. So pause the video and see if you can write a symbol equation for sodium, potassium, rubidium and cesium. Hopefully you managed to follow the same pattern and write the following symbol equations. That's everything that you need to know about the reactions of metals with water for GCSE chemistry. Thank you very much for watching and if you found that useful don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE chemistry videos coming soon.